So we're going to start off the first example by using collage. So you can see what I have here is I have a bunch of pieces of colored paper and they don't all match the, um, the panel that I'm trying to recreate, but they're kind of close enough. So I'm first starting with the, um, with the wood around the window. And I cut that one and I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it to see where it goes. But as I'm doing it, I'm realizing it's a little too small. Good thing, as I have more paper, I can just cut a bigger size. I think that one is gonna work better. So that's the one I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna glue it down, uh, put glue on the whole thing, and then put it down. And again, when I say eyeball, I'm kind of looking at the top of the page and the side of the page to try to get the, um, to, to try to get the placement right. Um, you can see I kind of made a little mark on that, um, on the bottom for that, for, for the angle of the floor. I think that's going to be pretty good. Um, so I put glue on it and then I'm going to put it down. And, uh, I'm going to make the window. I don't have any blue, uh, but I do have a bit of, um, wrapping paper and I'm going to use a corner of this, um, to to put it down you'll also notice as i'm doing this but before i even started filming um i kind of made a decision of what's what's the first thing i need to put down and then i kind of have to work backwards so for me it was the window and the floor and then i can put uh the guy down there first so i don't have any dark brown paper and i want to try to get this right so i have a piece of gray paper and a brown marker and i think i'm going to capture the color exactly how i want it um, and I also kind of like the look of, um, of, of the, of the colored in paper. Uh, I just kind of, I, I think it gives it a texture. It does make it hard to draw on, but, um, you can see it, uh, when you're doing it yourself, you can't really see how I'm doing it. You can just kind of trust me that I'm looking at the picture as I'm drawing this and trying to, um, and trying to get it right. It's tough in a project like this to, um, to get the proportions right. So if you need to do it a couple times, don't, don't, don't be frustrated. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm a professional drawer. It's, I, I can usually get it in one shot, but even when I have to redo it, I don't mind. I'd rather work at it, um, in the beginning than be kind of frustrated that I didn't do it right when it's all finished. I'm going back over it with a Sharpie because there are some lines um, to differentiate between the arms and the head. And um, I, you know, I think that, I think that's pretty cool. Now I can use the elbow and where the hand is and, and the body to try to get the placement right uh, of, of the figure in front of the window. And I, you know, I thought about it. You know, even before I started this whole process, you know, I, I thought about placement and what I was going to do first. Um, what I'm doing right here is a little corner was sticking up. So I put a little bit of glue on my finger. Sometimes that's easier to get to the, to get to the piece. So now I'm, uh, uh, I'm lining up the edge of my black construction paper to get his pants. Um, and then it, it just makes it easier for me. I'll get the, I'll get the exact right, um, uh, width of paper right at the waist. Um, and a lot of times what I do when I'm doing something like this that goes to the edge is I will, um, I'll let it go past the edge of the page and then I just kind of snip it up. You can decide whether you go under or over, um, you know, in something like this. I think, um, it kind of, it, it, it all depends. This time it's important. I think that the, that the pants go under the body because, uh, I have that edge of, of where the, where, where the skin and pants meet. So there you see, I just, I trimmed off the pant legs. So now I have to make the hammer and here I'm, I'm kind of, kind of eyeballing it. Uh, you know, 
but I am drawing it close to the hand so I get the right size. You don't want to have like a four inch guy and a 10 inch hammer that, you know, that doesn't really make any sense. For this, I'm definitely going to put the hammer uh, underneath the hands because that just, it doesn't, it, that's how the picture looks and it's just easier. Again, I just got to put a little bit of glue on my finger and put it on the hand to get it stuck on the page. Some things will be hard uh, in your collage, uh, like the body, and some things are easy, like the hammerhead. That's just a rectangle. So now I have to draw that nail in, and it's a little bit bigger um, in the picture than it would be in real life. And uh, I drew one, and then I realized I wanted to make it even a little bigger. Um, I think that's how we all do stuff like that. There is a part of that nail that has a shadow on it, like a highlight, and it's in blue. And you can see what I do here is I'm lining up my blue construction paper and uh, just to get to get that profile of that nail head. And I'm gluing, you see, I'm gluing the blue onto the hammer before I put the hammer down so that it's all in one piece when I, when I finally put it down on my, um, on my page. And I think this looks really good. And there I have, uh, you know, see our panel four of the migration series. Next, we're moving on to panel 58, and we're gonna do it in watercolor. So the first thing we have to do is we have to lightly draw it out on our page. I'm making some of my lines a little bit darker than what I would do normally, um, but I want you to be able to see them. So I'm, again, I have the picture right in front of me, and I am eyeballing it. I'm sort of using visual cues, uh, the, the, the side of the page, the tops and bottoms, to try to place my figures on the page in the similar positions that uh, that are in the Jacob Lawrence painting. Um, again, I'm not. It's not going to be absolutely perfect, but you know, in art there is no such thing as perfect. There's better and worse, and I'm going to try to do better than I'm going to try to do worse. So, um, you know, this this um, painting is pretty simple, but anything that's simple is a little deceptive because if you if there's not a lot in the painting then there's not a lot of room to make big mistakes so the other nice thing about um, drawing lightly is that it'll it will allow you to erase um, and this kind of drawing would go for um, uh, if you're doing it in watercolor or if you're using um, colored pencils or markers um, it's a, it's the same sort of drawing out, um, uh, process. Um, so when I was drawing this, I, I went for the simplest thing first, which is the, um, the chalkboard. And then I, uh, and then I went with the girl on the right because, uh, it seemed like her hand, uh, it was an easy place for me to, um, to place her hand. If I know like it, that it's really close to the edge of, the chalkboard, um, you know, I can sort of eyeball how far in and how far down from that top right corner of the chalkboard for me to draw it out. And then each subsequent girl that I'm drawing, I'm kind of looking at the negative space in between the figures and I'm looking at the line that their hand makes or that their hands make um, to try to, uh, to try to accurately capture what is in uh, the Jacob Lawrence painting. And I'm not afraid to make mistakes. You know, in the end, I don't know if this is, if, if I, if I crushed it, but I think I captured, uh, you know, the gist, I captured the spirit 
of his work. Um, and I'm pretty happy with it. So I, it's all drawn out uh, and I'm starting with watercolor and I'm, again, you kind of want to, just like in collage, you want to kind of think strategically of how you're going to paint these um, or like where you're going to start. I started with the dresses because um, frankly, sometimes I don't clean my brushes super well in between colors and I want those colors to be bright and vibrant. Um, there's no mixing of these colors. I'm going straight from the tray. So uh, it's really, the reason why I do it that, that way is because I know myself and then I don't like perfectly wash my brushes. Next, I'm gonna be painting um, the chalkboard. So what I'm doing kind of off camera is I am mixing uh, some colors in, uh, like on the lid of, the, of my watercolor set. And uh, I, I'm using a different brush. I know not all of you have multiple brushes, but for, for large areas, um, you know, if we, were, if we were in the art room, uh, we would be, you know, we, we would have all the different brushes that, that we have in there. Um, so, you know, th this way I can, um, I'm trying to approximate what we would do in school. If you have a big brush for large areas, terrific. Um, this is sort of like doing a, a, just a wash of color. Now I'm cutting around uh, the figures, like I'm cutting around their arms and bodies, but I'm also cutting around the numbers because with watercolor, there, you, you don't want to paint white on your watercolor. You want to leave the white of the page. And um, this is just, it's a, it's, a, it's a thing that I like to do. Uh, it adds a little extra, um, uh, a little extra touch to my watercolor paintings. If I can leave those, even if they're really small, leave those little areas um, white, uh, it'll, it'll make the whole thing pop. Now I had to make up, mix up some, some more color um, so what I'm doing instead of just painting, you know, the bottom right of the chalkboard, a darker color, I'm kind of going over the whole thing again. Um, this is kind of a bummer when you don't mix up enough color, but it's also, it's not the end of the world. And even if I didn't blend it all in, I'm not so bothered. Um, so don't be too hard on yourself. Um, You know, in the end, if we if we mess up one painting, then we that's why we have more paper. So before I before I switch colors completely, um, the boots on the center girl uh, they seem to be like a darker blue. So I just kind of mixed in a little bit more dark. So um, again, I'm, I switch brushes. I have a very thin brush, and I'm doing um, I'm doing the skin color. Now I started uh, with that part of the arm on the um, on the girl on the left, but Sometimes with watercolor, you'll get like, just sort of like a, too much water, uh, too much pigment. So what I did there is I used a bit of paper towel to blot it really gently. And I'm gonna go back and when, when, when that little spot is dry, I'm gonna go back and just kind of clean it up a little bit right there. In the Jacob Lawrence painting, the um, there's there is a you, you can see a difference between their skin, their brown skin and the brown wall color, but I um, you'll you'll see when I go to uh, when I paint the background, I kind of change it change the color slightly just so that the whole thing is a little bit more um, readable. You don't want your the subjects of your painting to accidentally blend in with the background of your painting. Uh, I, I went back to do the arm of the girl on the left because I think that the, that the placement of the hands on the chalkboard, it feels like, we all know what that feels like when we have to like put our hand up and we have to stretch for something, but we have something in our hand our, our, our fists uh, sort of are held in a very specific way. And, I, and it's those little details 
in a painting that I want to, that, that I'm interested in capturing. Um, I just think it, it's, it's more interesting for me and it's way more fun for the viewer if they don't have to sit there and try to decipher what I'm doing. Now here on the girl on the right, um, there is a, there, there is a, a line of white in Jacob Lawrence's painting where, uh, to, to differentiate her two legs. Um, here again is, I, I'm, I'm leaving that little area uh, because I think it's, I think it's just kind of, it's, it's special. It's, it's one of those, just like, just like the very specific way they're all holding their fists with the chalk. Um, uh, it's those little details that I think um, are important to me. It's pretty cool how a painting like this can come together. It does take concentration, no doubt about it. But, um, you know, I, I really like this, doing, doing a project like this where I can sort of concentrate and meditate. You know, maybe I put on, you know, uh, some light music in the background, just as, a, as, as some white noise. These are the ways that I like to make art. There is a little detail on the on the dress on the girl on the left, um, and I think it, I can't tell if it was done like in a marker in the original, but because I have some black paint and I have this really thin paintbrush, I it's just easier for me um, to to use a brush. So now I'm doing that same thing with a wide brush. I'm cu I'm cutting in. Um, you know, when I, when I, I want to get my paint right up to the figures, um, and I'm doing that because I've waited for my paint to dry. I know it doesn't seem like it in a video like this, but if, if the paint on the, on the girls was too wet, the background paint would just bleed into each other. It's, I mean, it's, it, watercolors are fascinating. Uh, but they're also frustrating in the same in the same respect. So you know, if something like that happens, you can try to really gently just place like a corner uh, or the edge of a paper towel uh, onto onto your um, watercolors. It doesn't always work, um, but you know, it's it's good to try. And. This, here it is. I really, I think that this is really fun. There we go.